this is Harish here. Welcome to DB2 LUW Tips and Tricks video tutorial part 20. In this video tutorial, I'm going to talk about how to avoid transactional rollback after a lock timeout occurs. So this slide talks about the scenario and the solution. Uh, the scenario is like if an application uh, gets a lock timeout error message uh, when executing some transactions, the default behavior is to roll back the entire transaction like completely. Okay, let's say uh, a transaction is containing three SQL statements. Each of the three statements are like update statements. Okay, so what will happen in a typical behavior is let's say if your uh, application is timing out on the third update statement within that transaction, what will happen is even that lock timeout occurs, it will roll back the update one, update two also because they are all considered to be part of the same transaction. There is no transactional control to the calling application. So the entire transaction will be rolled back uh, at the server side itself. Okay. So now uh, uh, the solution for this is actually we can set the registry variable db2 lock underscore two underscore rb equal to statement. So which means that when the lock timeout occurs, it will only roll back the current statement preserving the previous uh, uh, SQL statements, what were all the changes that were done as part of transaction, it will be preserved. So uh, what will happen is the application can then decide whether to roll back or commit the changes. So the transactional control is given to the calling application. Now you, you can even uh, code some kind of a retry logic in the application such that uh, only that particular failing uh, SQL uh, statement uh, can be uh, retried and the, the process can continue, the business process can continue that way. Okay, uh, So that is the uh, uh, main feature or a good thing about this particular registry variable. But you have to be cautious when using this uh, particular variable also because you have to design for the business atomicity of transactions because uh, let's say you know as part of the uh, transaction three updates are happening. So all the three updates should be committed or all the three should be rolled back. So that might be like a business atomicity, right? So your business atomicity should match with your requirements. So you have to be cautious with that, okay? Because when you set this variable, you are actually updating only two tables and the la the, the third update statement which failed is alone uh, rolled back and you can still commit the changes. So it gives you that control, right? So you have to be careful when designing the application for the business atomicity of the transactions as well. Let's quickly look into some examples. Okay, here the uh, instance is started. I have updated the uh, uh, parameter lock timeout to a value of six. So it will uh, lock timeout after six seconds. Uh, I have activated the database, connect to the database. There are three tables, table A, table B, table C. And all these tables have three records each. Uh, which says like I uh, in a text all small case love DB2 and table B will have the same I love DB2 as uh, the first letter alone capitalized okay and table C is having I love DB2 uh, in textual form uh, all upper cases okay now let's go to app 1 <coughs> connect to the uh, database and I'm issuing a select star from table C okay I'm locking uh, records in table C with read stability isolation mode so that the lock uh, you know it, it gets uh, uh, it will not allow uh, other applications to access table c now okay so i can mimic the lock timeout scenario so app 1 i am now uh, connecting to app 1 okay let's run that it's connected and it has locked the records now okay now let's go to app 2 we'll connect and we'll update table A and table B. We have logged table C in app 1. Now I am updating table A and table B in app 2. Okay, copy that. So this is app 2. So let's connect and it has updated successfully. Let's go to app 3. Okay, which is like another terminal. So I'm just connecting and I'm uh, reading the values. Okay, copy. So since uh, this is happening in an uncommitted uh, uh, read isolation level, all the three records will be visible okay and it is able to pick up the change that we have done see the text uh, i has been replaced by the alphabet i okay if you look at here in table a in table b 
and in table table C we have not done the change we have only done the change in table A and B the textual I is changed to alphabet I okay so that is the change we have done Net, now let's go to app 2 and try to update table C now this should uh, result in a timeout okay so after uh, 6 seconds we should get a timeout error because it is logged in app 1 see here the SQL code is important SQL 0911N which means that uh, the current transaction has been rolled back and reason code 68 means it's a timeout issue so the log timeout has uh, occurred okay and it has rolled back the entire transaction okay so let's go to app 3 now and select the records again okay okay now you will see that the updates that were done to a and b is uh, reverted back because it's part of the transaction it has been reverted back because of the lock timeout issue table c the old value is all there okay so this is the default behavior now let's do uh, connect reset in all the applications app 1 app 2 and app 3 so let's come here i'm doing a connect reset in app 2 this is connect reset in app 3 and let me go to app 1 where the records are locked there also I am doing a connect reset ok so after that let's set this particular uh, value db2 uh, registry variable db2 lock to rbs statement ok then stop we have to restart the instance for the changes to take effect db2 stop db2 start activate the database again then uh, connect to the uh, database and lock the records again ok lock the records for the table C so let's do that so it's stopping the instance then it should start ok stop got successful start is also successful and activate DB is also successful and it has locked the records as well ok now let's get sorry ok now let's go to app 2 now I will connect to app 2 again I will update the first two tables ok so let me update yes update got successful ok connect as app 3 check the values ok so it should show us the particular uh, values uh, so the updated uh, change is reflecting because of the isolation level I am using ok so here I am able to see the changes because of the UR isolation uncommitted read isolation level and it is showing the uh, uh, values ok let's come back to let's come back to app 2 ok update table C ok it should get timed out because it is logged in app 1 ok so the app 2 will get timed out look at the change in the SQL code here 913 with reason code 80 so this uh, this also means a timeout but it is like a statement level timeout ok so if it has uh, updated if it has failed uh, at a statement level let us go to app 3 and when we look in app 3 it has to preserve the updates that has happened in table A and table B so let's check that out ok See it has preserved right so that is the main change here so table a and table b the updates are still preserved okay now the control is shifted to the app 2 now app 2 can roll back the transaction or commit the transaction so let's say the app 2 rolls back the transaction so app 2 goes and rolls back the transaction so now what will happen in app 3 is the change will also roll back it will not be able to see the change see here it was able to see the change but now app 2 has rolled back due to which see it has rolled back the old value again right so the, the control is actually with the application 2 ok the transactional control is with the application 2 ok now let's try this uh, one more time ok 
so this time again i will update uh, table a and table b in app 2 ok nothing special here so the same case and app 3 should able to see those changes because of the isolation level ok so the first is changed as i this is also changed as i ok the transactional changes is seen now app 2 goes and updates the third table table c which is a log to 1 it should receive a timeout now uh, sql 0913n should come uh, now yes ok so this is a timeout actually now app 3 should still be able to see the change because the transaction is neither uh, the transaction is still uh, not committed uh, or rolled back so the changes should be visible ok it is like uncommitted change so it is still visible ok now let the app 2 commit the change and connect reset ok so after the error uh, timeout error occurred I am still committing the change I am doing the connect reset in app 2 so what sh what should happen is in app 3 the connection uh, should be the change should be committed so that so that is the uh, logic ok see the change is committed see here this was not the case earlier uh, like before setting the uh, variable this was not the case but now after setting the registry variable it is able to preserve the changes and the provided the application has committed the changes so this is uh, rather very important uh, feature uh, it's very useful one but we have to be cautious because from the business perspective it might not be a complete transaction so we have to take care uh, in that uh, aspect ok so it cannot be like straightforward you just implement in any application uh, so we have to be cautious when implementing this uh, particular functionality ok uh, that's it in this video tutorial uh, thank you so much for watching and please subscribe to my channel db2luw academy uh, see you in the next uh, video tutorial bye bye